my dad died suddenly in 1936, leaving mom with 10 children and absolutely no money right in the middle of the Depression. And I uh, was a singing telegram boy for the Western Union. That was my first job when I was, when I was uh, 14. And they used to let me out of class. The uh, telegram would come in at Western Union and they'd call over the school and say that this telegram needs to be sung to so-and-so out on Broad Street or wherever it was. And I, they'd let me and I'd get, out of, get on my bicycle and go out to sing the telegram and come back to this class. <laughs> and and uh, I never would forget when it was Bernie Schimmel who uh, came from Lincoln, Nebraska, and it was his birthday. And I went to, and uh, they called and wanted me to come and sing. And I, so I put on my, my little uniform and, and went to the, and I, when I walked in, when I, the lady comes, she tapped the glass and got the, the people's attention. And I started singing Happy Birthday, and everybody joined in. And then the lady took my hat. She had that little, you know, hat from Western Union. And I took my hat and uh, passed around, and I got $7. And I, boy, did I think I hit the mother load right there. <laughs> uh, so I'd gone to the All-Catholic Boys School, and when I came back, I didn't, uh, you know, the war ended, so they were letting GIs out, all, you know, from all branches of the service, and all the colleges just filled up almost overnight. So um, when I got back, why well, there's Knox College right there in my hometown, and it was completely filled. So I started hitchhiking around. I went from <laughs> all the different small colleges in, in, in northern Illinois and so forth. Everything was filled, all of Grinnell, Cornell, Dubuque, Iowa, uh, up into to Wisconsin and Minnesota. Couldn't get in. I just about given up. It was a girl's school called Francis Scheimer. So the next day I hitchhiked up to there. It was 120 miles from from my home from Galesburg, and I talked with Dr. Bro, the president, and he said, "Well, Bill, he said, this was we did. We uh, accepted 36 boys in Carroll County, and he said, but uh, we've we've had those boys, you know, for at least two or three months now. So he said." were completely filled up, and he said, uh, I'm sure sorry. And so I thanked him, and I went to a little diner, called the owner diner, started talking, asked me what I was doing up there, and so on. I, I told him what I had come up, and he said, well, did you get admitted? And I said, no. I said, Dr. Bill said they had all the things. He said, well, what were you going to major in? And I said, <laughs> I said, I didn't want to get my foot in the door. I said, I, <laughs> I hadn't thought of what I'd major in. And he said, well, let me tell you. He says, you know what Dr. Bro's interested in? I says, I have no idea. He says, international relations. And as I was walking by there, why Dr. Bro was cutting across uh, the campus. And I thought, well, what have I got to lose? I'm up here. And so I jogged over there and I said, excuse me, Dr. Bro. But I said, when we were talking this morning, I said, we didn't get around to talking about what I might be majoring in. And he said, no, that's true. What were you thinking of, Bill? I said, oh, definitely international relations. <laughs> Dr. Bro looked like a bird dog going on point. <laughs> so that's the way I got into college. In 1955, uh, I came to Boulder actually to handle the, the financing and the sales and the advertising for Martin Acres that were being developed by George and Everett Williams. And that was in its infancy when, uh, when I came here in June of 1955. Six. Could you take us through a typical uh, purchase by a citizen of Martin Acres home? Yes, I, um, in fact this is a, very, this is a true story. Uh, the homes were selling for, their initial home sold for $10,950. There were three bedrooms, uh, one bath, attached garage, uh, and a crawl space. And, and uh, they were um, uh, <clears throat> 1,050 square feet. And uh, I made arrangements uh, with the VA and FHA to um, uh, uh, the people could buy the Martin Acre home for uh, that 10950 get 100% financing, and it only cost them $99 to move in, all closing costs included. And so uh, uh, that's the reason that was such a fast seller, and one of the main reasons. And the, um, uh, in addition, they, uh, uh, the, the Williams brothers did build a good home. And so if you came in and, and needed a home, why, it would probably, it was somewhere between four and six months before we could promise you occupancy. However, I had uh, a, a young couple that came in and uh, said that they had just been transferred 
from Guam here and named John and Remy Pitts and that uh, they had been living in a motel. Uh, they had four children at the time and uh, they were unable to find um, a home to purchase and they were just in desperate streets and wanted to know if there was anything that, that I might or any advice I might give them. And just within a half hour before they came in, a man had just walked out of the office who had bought one of the, the homes that was going to be ready for occupancy in within a week. And he said that uh, uh, his marriage had been put off uh, for about three months and he wanted to know if he could give up that home and uh, then buy a home further on down. I said, there would be no problem whatsoever. And so I, uh, we moved him to another uh, lot and uh, here walks in John and Ramey Pitts in this desperate situation and I was able to move them in the very next day. And it was, uh, and to this day, Ramey Pitts, John has passed away, he is with the National Bureau of Standards, but uh, they raised five children in that three bedroom home, one bath, and uh, Ramey still lives in that home. She's 86 years old now. Uh, so that's an, an actual story of, of the typical buyer that we had. Uh, for me, it was a joy to, um, uh, to work with the, uh, the people that were anxious to buy. Um, Boulder was experiencing um, a considerable growth at the time, and uh, I, I just loved closing the loans for these people that many of which never thought they were going to be able to afford a home, and so on. Uh, there was a, <coughs> a trucking company that came into Denver and uh, a couple of the drivers uh, came up to uh, the Martin subdivision and uh, bought homes here and uh, there and then they uh, told them the word got out and we had about uh, uh, 45 of those drivers that were initial that all of the 45 bought within a period of about about six weeks and that was quite an influx and then they were only in their homes for less than a year when the, legislature, the state legislature of Colorado passed a, a quite a large over-the-road uh, tax and the trucking firm moved to Cheyenne, Wyoming. And all the drivers, if they were going to keep their jobs, had to go with them. And so they, uh, I gave every one of them now, uh, the, all of them were GI veterans and they had paid nothing down and I gave every one of them a thousand dollars for the, for their houses and they deeded their property over to them and I turned around and sold them to people who couldn't qualify for uh, for a hundred dollars down and twenty five dollars a month to get my money back out of it <laughs> so I ended up having twenty five houses I almost lost my marriage at that point but <laughs>